What's up everyone, welcome back to this video today on the channel and I'm really excited about this one. We'll talk about how to trade support and resistance zone. That's a topic that I really, really believe in because the fact that I trade zones myself. And I'll show you how that works, how to spot them in the market properly and the process to trade them with two different strategies you can use in the market from today. So let's get started with that. One thing I want to make clear from the start is that the location that you take a trade in, this location is more important than your setup. A perfect trade setup taken at the wrong location is likely to produce no edge over time. That's something you have to understand that the location where you take your trade matter more than the setup that you have when you take your trade. And that's because the location of a trade matters more than the setup or indicator you use to take the trade. Here's an example of a wrong location. On a one hour chart, you have a perfect engulfing candle over here. And that looks really awesome to me. That's something I would trade myself, a really cool setup. But that setup was taken on the top of a trend on a daily chart, which means that the market is exhausted, it's been moving up a lot, and you got a single thing at all, which is a really nice setup, but at the top of a trend where we're all exhausted, that's not the right place to take that trade at all. Here's an example of a good location on a trade. So you've got the same candlestick pattern here, the same angle thing candle that is on a one hour chart, but there the daily chart is at the bottom of a range and it's approaching a support area that really makes it more likely for the market to bounce back and to give us a nice trade and also a nice move. It's just not about the setup, it's about the location of the setup and making sure that these things align for having better trades in the market. So quick question before we move on, let me know in the comment section, are you using support and resistance zones in trading right now? Yes or no, let me know in the comment section, I'm curious to hear. And if you're using them, tell me how it's going. If you have any questions about them, I'll be happy to help and do more videos about the topic. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let's begin by talking how to identify support and resistance zones or areas. Now you've got two choices when placing zones. These are kind of ways people use to look at the zones and you'll find two different kind of ways of doing it that people talk about online and also that you can use yourself. The first one is that you expect reversal. This is great if you trade only reversals or pullbacks of these reversals. And that basically means that you will look at all the zones and put them all in your chart all together, no matter where they are in the market, no matter what places the zone are at, you'll just put all of them. We'll do of course examples of that pretty soon. The second way is to adjust to the trend and sideways phases. So that way takes into account when the market is trending, when, when the market is sideways. And this is much better for people who have different styles of trading. Like for example, you trade breakout, reversals, and pullback. Then you need to use that method of looking at the zones so that you have more places to trade your different kind of trades. So I want to show you how that works on the chart with the first method of expecting reversals. And if you want to see more instructions on this, how to do detail, just check out the PDF link below. I prepared for you a guide that will teach you some strategies that you can use in the market with those zones. Also, how to look at them in the market the right way with these two categories we talk about here, these two methods. So check out that PDF link below for all the instructions. And you can print it out, put it in your desk, and follow it every single day that you trade. So our first example here is going to be on GBP, USD, so pound and US dollar. What I like to do here to look at the zones is to go either on a daily chart or a weekly chart. For this example here, we'll take a daily chart and we'll look at how to place the zones when you expect reversals and you trade pretty much only reversals or pullbacks. Now, the way this works is we want to take a daily chart first of all. We want to make sure you have no indicators on the chart, nothing else, only the count of six. You can use lines if you want. And actually, the first tip here is we'll have to kind of zoom out of the chart. We are now here on March 16th and what we'll do is we want to find a way to make this a bit smaller so we see more count six in the past. Until you see something like this on trading view. And that gives us a good idea of since this is 2019. This is like two years ago in May. So about two years ago or something. Like two years minus one month ago. And so that's pretty good. Now what we want to do here is we want to switch to a line chart. This is much easier if you want to look at the zones on a bigger perspective, bigger picture view of things. It's going to be much better for you to look at the zones. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll go to this and I'll try to put a line on all the zones that I see that make sense. Okay, all the, the point where price touched many times before. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, I'm going to go into the horizontal line and all the places where price touches at least two times, okay, we can put a line there. So it could be exactly the same, it could be a bit different. It doesn't have to be super precise here, but all, all the places where the line touches, we can put a zone there. First one I see is this one here. See how price touches has a high here and a high here. So we'll put around there. Uh, I like to put these like dotted lines. If you want to change it up, you just go here, 
double click on your line, then you can change the pattern here. You want to have a dashed line, dotted line, uh, or a regular line. I like the dashed one better for these zones. Now I'll look at the other places where I see obvious points where we have highs and lows where the market reverses. Another good tool you can use to do that is you can simply go in here on TradingView, you search for the indicators, you use the pivot high-low. Uh, pivot high-low here. This indicator gives you some highs and lows in the market. Now you might want to edit it a little bit to make it more or less, depending on what you prefer. Let's see, we do 21 and 21. It's going to give us the highs and the lows. Uh, perfect. So this could be useful. I did this a long time, uh, but now I'm used, to, I'm used to doing it without this indicator here. So we don't really need that one. But if you think it's useful for you, then just use it. That's going to be a lot helpful. So now what we'll do is we'll go over here. And we'll start to place some more lines on our chart. I see one obvious here. Our price reversed over there, over here, and over here. Okay, we'll make sure we simplify these zones later, make them more clear, make them more perfect. But for now, we just want to kind of brainstorm a little bit in the zone and start to put them on our chart. Another one that I see is over here. There we go. That's another one. So we touch over there, over here. And here we didn't touch, but maybe we put it a little bit higher there. Yeah. Okay, that was more sense. So we touched many times over there. Cool. So now what? Now that we have this, we can zoom out a little bit if you want, or we can just stay like this. We'll try to see if we have some history in the past, because now price is at, is at a level where we didn't have data on over here. So I want to make sure we have some data in the past to look at our zones. So I'll add a few, I'll add a few more zones here, with starting with this one here. Where see we are back at this zone over here today. That's pretty interesting. And we could put one also, just close this here, we could put one there on the top, like this. Awesome, cool. So that gives us a good idea of our zones for now. Now you could add more, you could add less, that's totally fine. Actually, maybe this one, you can decrease it a little bit. So it's going to fit with the one before. See over here and over there. So that's a pretty cool zone. All right, so now we have pretty much what we need. We could add a few there, here and there, but like here. But we really want to have the key zones, the main ones. That's what matters the most. So now we'll go back to a candlestick chart and we'll try to see if these zones fit well on our charts. Okay. As you can see, this one here fits well and this one here fits well, that's pretty good. Over here, over there, that's good, that's awesome, perfect. Okay, that, that's pretty good. So our zones are pretty clear. You'll see, like we said before, that price made it high over there, bounce back here to the low and that is our, an area we can trade as support. So this is the way we do when we want to expect reversals on our zones and we play zones that way. And what that means basically what the only thing you would trade here is you would wait for price to hit these zones and you would trade reversals or pullbacks and that's it. Okay, that's only if you trade no breakout at all, just trade these zones and that's it. You could still take trade breakouts here, but it's going to be a bit tricky. So the second method we'll use is going to be more adequate for this. This method here is mainly if you want to trade reversals and look for these reversals all the time in the market. So now what we can do is if you want to do it in a fancier way, what I would do is I would simply put some color kind of boxes on my chart to make it more clear that we have a zone there. So I'll show you an example here on uh, the real chart that I use. What this chart does is we are having the lines there that we put on the other chart and we are having here the zones that we put in. So a support area will be a green box below the zone because we are aiming to go into the support area and a resistance will be the opposite. So a, a red box above the line. So what that will look like on our chart. So what that would look like on our chart is something like this. We will go here above and because we have a resistance over here, we'll put this red zone like this. Okay, we can adjust the length or the height of the zone. It could be a little bit less, could be a bit more. I did not want to go to like the high we have in that zone. That would be the ideal case. Then we could copy it and we could put this as here or support. So support will be below to make it clear that we want to get in the zone and we'll change it to green over here. So that would be the ideal scenario there to make it clear that you have a zone there. Now you can do this for all your zones or just the one that are closer to the chart. So what you can do is you can just take this one here and we can replicate it to the bottom there. There we go. So that would be the idea of how we can look at these zones, how we can place them when you expect reversals. Now let's get to the second method. 
so the second method of looking at the zones is when you want to adjust the market and use the market phase to determine the zones and trade multiple different kind of trades in the market. Again, you can check out the PDF link below for more details on how to use this and how to do it. But let's get an example on the chart. Here we're going to look at EuroCAD for an example of how to do this. EuroCAD over here. And basically, the only thing that's going to change here is that we are going to be more precise on our zones. And we'll try to use zones only when price is going sideways. When price is not sideways, then we will avoid using zones. And that's going to be the principle here. So you can use different kind of time frames for this. I will prefer to go with the daily chart again, like I said before. And what I will do is I will, I will go back in time. And we'll try to identify how the market is behaving. This time without a line chart. Now what we'll do is every time the market is going sideways like this, we'll make a box. When it's trending, we'll make a, a line indicating the direction of the trend. And we'll do this until we have some clear zones on all our chart. Now, obviously, the market might make zones within zones. So we have to be careful about that as well. And this method here, if you are a beginner, is not really the best one to use. It's the one to use more if you are advanced and if you have a different kind of setup you want to trade in the market. So the way this would look like is we'll go back in time. We'll go back, let's see here. And we'll start to look at what the market's doing in this phase right now. So here I'm going to assume that the market's going sideways. So we have this phase where we have the same low. Okay, when we have the same low here, it's because we are sideways. We'll just assume that. We don't, we don't have a trend. For a trend to occur, we need both say higher highs, higher lows for an uptrend, and lower highs, lower lows. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Of course, we have like a small sideways market here within the, the big sideways market. So that's something we have to look into. But in general, uh, this would be sideways. Now, we'll move forward, see how price here breaks out. That will be when you identify this that we have the same low for a while over there over here over here over here here again here and we break out then that's your sign to trade breakout so what will indicate is that in this section over here price is actually trending downward so we're going to the downside and you can trade the pullbacks here you can trade the breakout here you can trade a bunch of different things there now here you'll see price makes again a low and comes back to that low many times Okay, that is when we can trade or support over here. Or we could also sell at a resistance. When we come back to a high we've been before, we can just sell the market there. So that's our zone over here. Now these zones, as you can see, are much more short term. Right? They don't, we don't keep track of them much for the long term unless we have a big change in the market. And that's how we do it in that case. Now you see price made a breakdown. Okay, but this is a fake one because we went back inside and price started a really big uptrend here really strong for a couple of days until we got this here sort of consolidation okay this is what i would call the consolidation here because we have lower highs but they're not going really low that much it's more like a flag within a big trend now if you look here price consolidates again and goes back on the other side so what we'll do is this here will be our support area and of course, we will break out of our support over here. Now, these zones here you'll notice are really discretionary. You could change it up depending on the person, they will be different. But you need those people to trade breakouts and different kinds of trades. Now, here you could trade, of course, the breakout, like we said before. And price there just starts in the trend. So here we'll identify when we break out above, this counts as a trend. We'll come back to the tester zone, and I think we'll end up inside. But yeah, so that still varies. Now, here we have a period in the market where we are going sideways. We are going sideways to finally break down over here and price starts a decline in the trend. So that's where we have our trend-based trades that come into place so or pullbacks to the zone or to different levels that come into play over here. So here we really adjust to the zone and what happens in the market on a smaller level. This is better if you, if you trade intraday uh, than, if you swing trade for, than if you swing trade for sure. It's better if you're going to trade on a, let's say, one-hour chart or 30-minute chart or 15-minute chart. That's going to be better for these kind of zones. Because you look for these level here that might not last for a long time. And at least they last for a long time, you can benefit from them. You can benefit from them. But overall, they might not last for a very long time. And that's going to allow you, of course, to trade breakouts and different kind of setup here. As opposed to mainly only expecting reversals. So that's the second method we have for identifying the zones in the market. Okay, so now the biggest question that you might ask is, 
how to trade support and resistance areas in that case. What are some things that you can do to trade them? And I'll give you some strategies here you can use. Of course, you gotta maybe like tweak them and prove them if you want to make them your own. That's totally fine with me. But what I will teach you today here in this video are only reversals and pullbacks. Like I said, we can trade breakouts with these zones, but it's a bit different. And if you want to learn breakout, I've done actually a video on that in the past that you can just watch and it's going to be linked below the video here. Or just search for this title on YouTube, you'll find it pretty fast. And this video teaches you how to identify breakouts in the market and how to trade them easily. So you can just watch this in your own time and learn in that video how that works. The first strategy I would like to teach you today is the reversal trade one. And so that's my main strategy, the one that I trade in the market most of the time. And I'll show you how that works in the market. Again, if you want to see the instructions of this and all the rules, I'll put them in the PDF link below. You can just check it out, print it out on your own, and put it on your desk if you want to follow the rules and to have this all in one place on paper. So we'll look at EuroCAD on March 15th. For that purpose, I'm using here a daily chart for the zone. And we're looking at EuroCAD with the first method of looking at the zones. Because, of course, to trade reversals, it's going to be easier with that method. We expect reversals with that method of looking at the zones. And so here we are on a daily chart, coming back to a support area we've identified on our chart before. We bounced in the past over here, back in 2019, and of course here 2018 and beyond, earlier than that. So we expect, of course, price to go back up, and that is our main idea for this trade. So what we'll do is, in that case, we go on a one-hour chart to look at this setup. And you'll see that price on this one hour chart kind of pull back, kind of bounces from the level a little bit. But what's interesting here is that the price makes an engulfing candle over there. So when you see price making this kind of candlestick here, uh, that is closing beyond the high of the previous one as a bullish candlestick and the previous one being a bearish, that is called an engulfing candle. And so what we do here with a single thing candle is we want to have some more confirmation or some more confluence in the market. And what I like to do for my strategies, I use the Bongjuban to do that. Now the Bongjuban here is a simple 20 and 2. So it's very simple to use, it's very simple rules, and it's a basic one. And we want to have price breaking outside the Bongjuban and coming back within with this engulfing candle. So that's what happens. We break out of the Bongjuban here of the lower band because we look for a bullish trade. And then we have this engulfing candle over here. So what he'll do is we'll enter here beyond the high, put a stop loss, build the low. And our reward to risk would be 1 to 1 and 3 to 1. That's what I use. You can use a different method if you want. I do 1 to 1, 3 to 1. So 1 to 1. And our 3 to 1 will be somewhere around there. Not hit yet, but it will be close. So that's the setup here. And that's how I add some confluence with the bong Ben and price action. So the engulfing candle here. And it works really well in the market. Of course, if you have different take profit, it could work better or less well, depends on, on your style. I like to do one to one, three to one. You can do two to one as well, or one to one and three to one. This is always the ratio of your risk, so over there, to your reward. Okay, so one to one will be the same as your risk. Two to one will be two times your risk on as a take profit that you put in the market. So that's how things work here. Now let's discuss here our second strategy. And again, if you want to see the instruction to the strategy, it's going to be linked in the PDF below. That strategy is waiting for a pullback of the zone. So you know reversals work well in the market. I trade them a lot. But sometimes you're better off just waiting for a pullback. The risk to reward is usually better. And you don't have to pick a top or a bottom. It's sometimes easier to trade that way and a bit more relaxing. So what I do is I use the same principle we talked about here with the support and resistance areas. And I look for a pullback of the zone. For this trade, we'll look at GAP USD on March 5th. I've already plotted the trade here because that's the trade that I entered myself. But let's just take this off. And what we'll do here is we have price coming back to a support area. We'll take off the bong because we don't really need it there. These are the same zones we've used in the past that we've identified ourselves. Here we have price which was coming back to a support that we've touched on before in the past over here a long time ago. There, and now we're coming back here. And so that's the support zone that we look for trading in the market as a, of course, bullish trades. So you'll see price comes back to the zone. And what we want to do here is we want to wait for a pullback. So we move upwards from the zone and then price coming back and making a bullish candlestick. That's how we look for it. That's really simple. Probably the simplest strategy I've ever had uh, and that, that I've ever traded. So what we do is we wait for price to come back on the one hour chart and see our zone is here or line will be there just above. Price comes back. 
here. Doesn't hit the zone yet. We're gonna have Price really break the zone. Price comes back there and breaks in the zone. That's good. Now makes here a move to the upside, makes a pullback. We could trade this one here. That's that would be a valid place for trading. But the one that I traded was really when price went even deeper in the zone over here and bounced back up. So this is your pullback, made this high over there, and then went back down. And then you want to have a bullish candle. So any kind of bullish candle. Could be a small candle, a big one, could be anything. Just a bullish candle. So from there, we can enter over here. Right? We can enter over here. We can enter over here. We can enter always in the first bullish candle over here over here when price makes the first bullish candle in a series. So what we've done in that trade is we've entered, I believe here, on this bullish candlestick. Okay, so this candlestick over there, it's a sort of hammer, I believe, and that makes it a really quick candlestick to enter a trade. So as you see price here went lower, came back, I'm just gonna move this over here, came back above, bullish candlestick. Okay, of course you can enter before, it doesn't matter. And in that strategy, our stop loss is 50 pips. So what we do is put a stop loss 50 pips below. And we are aiming for basically on the daily chart or next zone. And so the zone will be around here. You put your take profits before that. So in that case, it will be here. I'll just show you on the daily chart what that looks like. So if you go here on the daily, our target will be there. Okay, and that's 316 pips. That's a lot uh, compared to our risk of 50 pips. Of course, you could like trail and do different things between that, which I won't talk about here. It's going to be linked in the, it's going to be discussed in the PDF link below that you can check out and download for using yourself. But basically, we put it before the next zone. And the next zone is here, uh, the high. So we put it before to be safe. And that is our target over here. So this is a trade that is working right now. It's not done yet. But the principle and strategy stays the same. And it works really well also. So of course, with the lower win rate, but a much higher reward in that, in that case. And so that is it for the examples on the chart and the strategies and how to look at the zones in the market. So I've prepared for you a how to trade support and resistance areas cheat sheet that I'll link below. And that cheat sheet is of course free, you can use it to better identify the zones. And I'll give you some simple strategies that we talk about here in the video that you can use to trade these zones. So if you want to have all the rules, all the criteria, all the factors there, just check out that PDF link below, download it. It's free, of course, and you'll be able to use these zones for your own trading. I hope you like this video today. Hope you got some value out of it. Subscribe if you haven't done yet, and I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.